Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg, Munich, June 21st, 1763. We are now in Munich. We arrived on Sunday evening, June 12th. Monday was a gala day on account of the Feast of St. Anthony, and we drove to Nymphenburg. Prince von Zweibrücken, whose acquaintance we had made in Vienna, saw us from the castle as we were walking in the garden recognized us and beckoned to us from the window. We went up to him, and after talking to us for some time, he asked whether the elector knew that we were here. We said no, whereupon he immediately sent off the elector a courier who was standing beside him to ask whether he would like to hear the children. Meanwhile, we were to walk in the garden and wait for the reply. Soon afterwards, a footman arrived with a message bidding us appear at the concert at eight o'clock. It was then four o'clock, so we walked through the garden and visited Brandenburg, but were obliged by sudden rain and thunder to take shelter. To be brief, Wolfgang was a great success. We did not get home until quarter past eleven, when we had some supper first and then got to bed late. On Tuesday and Wednesday, Evenings we were invited to visit Duke Clemens. On Thursday, we stayed at home in the evening on account of heavy rain. Now, the question is how we are to get on, seeing that here the charming custom is to keep people waiting for presents for a long time, so that no one has to be contented if one makes what one spends. Tomasini has been here for three weeks and has only just been paid. Tell Wenzel he can imagine how overjoyed we both were to meet here unexpectedly. He recognized me first, for he has grown tall, strong, and handsome. He displayed sincere gratitude for the old friendship which I had shown him at Salzburg, and this touched me and proved to me that he has a good heart. He, too, is going on to Stuttgart and Mannheim, and thence back to Vienna. The elector lunched in town on the 18th, and we were at the table with him. He and his sister and Prince von Zweibrücken talked to us during the whole meal. I got my boy to say that we were leaving the following day. The elector said twice that he was sorry not to have heard my little girl, for when we were at Nymphenburg, the time was too short, since the boy alone took up most of it with extemporizing and with playing a concerto for violin and clavier. Two ladies sang, and then the concert was over. So when the elector said a second time, I should have liked to hear her, I could not but say that it would not matter if we stayed on a few days longer. So all that we can do is to drive over on Wednesday as quickly as possible to Augsburg. For yesterday there was hunting, and today there is a French play, so that Nan Earl cannot perform until tomorrow. I may thank God if I am paid on Tuesday. The Duke will not detain me, but he is waiting to see what the Elector is going to give me. Tomasini has reason to be dissatisfied with the elector. He performed twice, had to wait for a long time, and finally received eight Max Dior. The Duke himself gave him a beautiful gold watch. Basta! I shall be glad if I receive what I have had to spend here and shall probably require for the journey to Augsburg. I can hardly wait for the hour to get away from Munich. I have no complaint to make about the elector, he is most gracious, and he said to me yesterday, Why, we are old acquaintances. We met nineteen years ago. But the apostles only think of themselves and their purses. We lunched recently with Herr Konig, the Hamburg merchant, who was at our house in Salzburg. He, too, is lodging at Storzer's in the front part of the house. While we are two flights up in the new building, there I met a certain Johann Gior Waller of Frankfurt, who lunched with us and gave me his address. He lives in Romberg, and is going to find private rooms for us in Frankfurt. 
On the same occasion, we met two Saxon counselors, de Bose and Hofgarten, both most agreeable people. And all these persons we shall meet again, God willing, in Stuttgart or Mannheim, for they are traveling by the same route as we are. As I write a bit of this letter every day, it will be finished eventually. We leave tomorrow, June 22nd. Farewell. I remain your sincere friend, Leopold Mozart. P.S. We have now been paid and have received a hundred golden from the elector and seventy-five golden from the duke. But what our bill at the end will be, we shall have the honor of hearing tomorrow. Herr Storzer has the reputation of giving good service, but also of writing letters and doing sums. Patience. Nanurl played before the elector, and the duke was warmly applauded. When we took our leave, both invited us to come again. Prince von Zweibrücken is to announce our arrival in Mannheim. He will soon be there, and Duke Clemens has provided us with a letter of recommendation to the elector of the Palatinate. Tell our friends that we are very well. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg. Ludwigsburg, July 11, 1763. I was kept in Augsburg for a long time and gained little or nothing, for our takings had to be spent as everything was uncommonly dear, although the landlord of the Dre Morin, Herr Linné, the most charming man in the world, did me very well, as Herr Weiser will testify. The people who came to the concerts were almost all Lutherans, apart from Herr Pravino, who came all three times with Madame Berenet and Herr Caligari, who appeared once par reputation. The only Catholic businessman I saw was Herr Mayer, the master of Lisette, Marat. All the others were Lutherans. We left Augsburg on the 6th and reached Alm in the evening, where we only stayed for that night and the following morning. We would not have spent the morning there if it had not been that on account of horses we had difficulty in proceeding. And now for a piece of bad luck. When we arrived at the post stage, we heard that the Duke had suddenly decided to go off on the night of the 10th to his hunting lodge, Grafenek, which is 14 hours distant. So I quickly decided that instead of going to Stuttgart, I would go straight to Ludwigsburg in order to catch him. I arrived there late on the 9th and had just time to see a play at the French theater. But not until the morning of the 10th was I able to see the chief Kappelmeister and the master of the hounds, for both of whom I had letters from Count von Wolfweg. In short, there was nothing to be done. Tomasini, who had been here a fortnight before I arrived, had not managed to get a hearing, and as everyone tells me, the Duke has the charming habit of making people wait interminably before hearing them, and then making them wait as long again before giving them a present. But I regard the whole business as the work of Jamelier who is doing his best to weed out the Germans at his court and put in Italians only. He has almost succeeded, too, and will succeed completely, for, apart from his yearly income of 4,000 golden, his allowances for four horses, wood and light, a house in Stuttgart, and another one in Ludwigsburg, he enjoys to the full favor of the duke, and his wife is promised a pension of 2,000 golden after his death. What do you think of that for a Kappelmeister's post? Furthermore, he has unlimited control over his orchestra, and that explains its excellence. Indeed, you can judge how partial Jomelli is to his country from the fact that he and some of his compatriots, who are ever swarming at his house to pay him their respects, were heard to say that it was amazing 
and hardly believable that a child of German birth could have such unusual genius and so much understanding and passion. Well, I must get on. My prospects now seem all the worse, as the Duke has seized all the horses from the post and the hired coachman, so I am forced to spend another day here. At the moment I am writing with constant interruptions, as I am endeavoring to beat up some horses and have sent messengers into every nook and corner of Ludwigsburg to find them. So you see that hitherto all I have gained is to have seen lands and towns and various people. Ludwigsburg is a very queer place. It is a town, yet more than hedges and garden trellises, the soldiers form the walls of this town. When you spit, you spit into an officer's pocket or into a soldier's cartridge box. In the streets you hear nothing but perpetual halt, quick, march, left, right, etc., and you see nothing but arms, drums, and war material. At the entrance to the castle there are two grenadiers and two mounted dragoons with their grenadier caps on their heads and caresses on their breasts, naked swords in their hands, and overhead a fine large tin roof instead of a sentry box. In a word, it would be impossible to find greater accuracy in drilling or a finer body of men. You see only men of the grenadier type, and every sergeant major draws forty gulden a month. You will laugh, and really it is laughable. As I stood at the window, I thought I was looking at soldiers about to take their parts in some play or opera. Just picture them to yourself. They are all exactly alike, and every day their hair is done. Not in ringlets, but just as any petit maitre does his own, in innumerable curls combed back and powdered snow white, with the beard greased coal black. I shall write more for Mannheim. Now I must close. When you write, write to Mannheim, and direct that the letter is to remain at the post till I fetch it. I received the music in Augsburg. If I were to write everything, I should have much more to say. But I must tell you that Wurttemberg is a very beautiful district. From Geislingen to Ludwigsburg, you will see nothing to left or right but water, woods, fields, meadows, gardens, and vineyards, and all these at once and mingled in the most charming fashion. Give my greetings to everyone in Salzburg, and especially to our father confessor, and Madame von Robenig and her family. Complimenti sopra complimenti. Adio. I am your old Mozart. My wife takes the greatest pleasure in the countryside in Württemberg. Written on the cover, Tell Herr Wenzel that I have heard a certain Nardini, and that it would be impossible to hear a finer player for beauty, purity, evenness of tone, and singing quality, but he plays rather lightly. Herr Wadiski is still in service at Stuttgart, but has not a good name on account of his childish behavior. In Augsburg, the choir master of St. Moritz, Herr Skusch, showed me a letter from Herr Meisner, in which he signed himself Capelia Magister. I explained to him that he was magister in singing in order to excuse his childishness. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg. Schweitzingen, July 19th, 1763. As I was writing from Ludwigsburg, I did not dare to add that the soldiering there is driven to excess, for in truth, twelve to fifteen thousand soldiers who strut about every day dressed up to the nines who can hardly walk on account of their tight gaiters and breeches made of the finest linen, all exactly alike, are too few to be taken seriously and too expensive to be joked about. Consequently, they are far too many. On the 
12th at 8 in the morning, we at last got the coach horses, which had been promised us for 4 o'clock, and, driving through Enzweigen, entirely Lutheran and a wretched spot, we reached Bruxelles in the evening. On that day's journey we had pleasant views, and much pleasure was afforded us by a good friend who, coming from Augsburg, happened to follow us. The residence in Bruzgau is worth seeing. The rooms are in the very best taste. There are not many of them, but so noble, indescribably charming and elegant, that nothing pleasanter could be seen. Thence we drove, not to Mannheim, but straight to Schweitzingen, where the court always spends the summer. Apart from the letter of recommendation which I had brought with me from Vienna to the director of music, Baron Ebertstein, we had already been introduced there by Prince von Zweibrücken, and in addition, Prince Clemens of Bavaria had sent to someone in Augsburg a letter of recommendation in his own hand for the electress at Mannheim. Yesterday, a concert, the second only to be held here since May, was arranged specially for us. It lasted from five to nine in the evening. Besides good male and female singers, I had the pleasure of hearing an admirable flutist, Wendling by name, the orchestra is undeniably the best in Germany. It consists altogether of people who are young and of good character, not drunkards, gamblers, or dissolute fellows, so that both their behavior and their playing are admirable. My children have set all Schweitzingen talking. The elector and his consort have shown indescribable pleasure, and everyone has been amazed. When we leave here, we shall go to Frankfurt. And now I hope that you, my valued friend, and your dearest wife, and all your dear ones are in excellent health, just as we all are. For thank God we have not been ill for a quarter of an hour. When circumstances arrive which oblige us to follow certain customs of the country, which are very different from our own, we often say, Now Frau Hagenhauer, should see us. For indeed, we see many strange and quite unusual things, which we should like you to see also. At present, we are staying in places where there are four religions, Catholic, Lutheran, Calvinist, and Jewish. Save for the court, which accounts for a large number of the inhabitants, Schwetzingen is chiefly Calvinist. It is only a village, but it has three churches. Catholic, Lutheran, and Calvinist, and the whole of the Palatinate is like this. Strange to say, since we left Wasserburg, we have not had a holy water stoop in our rooms, for even though the places are Catholic, such things are not to be found, because many Lutherans pass through, and therefore the rooms are so equipped that all religions can live in them together. In the bedrooms, too, there are seldom any pictures save a few landscapes or the portrait of some old emperor. There is hardly ever a crucifix. Fast dishes one scarcely ever gets, and they are very badly prepared, for everyone eats meat, and who knows what they have given us. Basta! It is not our fault. Our landlord here is a Calvinist. It is a good thing that this does not last long. Now I must close, for it is time to go to the French theater, which could not be improved on, especially for its ballets and music. I hope to find a letter from you in Frankfurt. I wish you good luck and good health, and to all, left and right, behind and in front, I send my greetings, especially to our Father Confessor, and to Madame Robinig. I am your old Mozart. In the volume of music sent over by Madame Hoffner from Nuremberg, there are six compositions. Open it up and give one of them to Eldgasser with my compliments. P.S. Money arrangements are surprisingly bad. Herr Provino has excelled himself and has given me unasked the finest letters of credit to different places. 
so that thanks to him and to Herr Caligari, I am well supplied with all that is necessary. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg. Mainz, August 3rd, 1763. From Schwetzingen, we drove to Heidelberg in order to see the castle and the great tune. On the whole, Heidelberg is very like Salzburg, that is to say, as to its situation. The fallen-in doors and walls in the castle, which are amazing to see, show the sad fruits of the late French wars. In the Heiligskirk, which is famous in history on account of the struggle between the Catholics and the Calvinists, which led the electors to transfer their residence to Mannheim, our Wolfgang so astonished everyone by his playing on the organ that by order of the town magistrate his name was inscribed with full particulars on the organ as a perpetual remembrance. After receiving a present of fifteen Louis d'Or, we came on from Schwetzingen through Worms to Mainz. In Mannheim, a French colonel presented a little ring to Nan Earl and a pretty toothpick case to little Wolfgang. Leopold Mozart to Hagenauer, Salzburg. Frankfurt, August 13th, 1763. The elector of Mainz was and still is suffering from a severe fever. People have been very anxious about him, as he has never yet been ill in his life. We lodged at the Konig von England, and during our stay gave a concert at the Rumisger Konig. Then we left our carriage and some luggage at our lodgings, and took the market boat to Frankfurt. We have been here for a few days already. Next Thursday we shall give a concert, I think, and then return to Mainz, for the market boats ply daily between Mainz and Frankfurt. Leopold Mozart to Hagenauer, Salzburg. Frankfurt, August 20th, 1763. We gave our concert on the 18th. It went off splendidly. On the 22nd and also on the 25th or 26th, we are repeating it. The Imperial Envoy, Count von Pergen, and his consort were there and everyone was amazed. God is so gracious that, thanks be to him, we are all well and are admired everywhere. Wolfgang is extraordinarily jolly, but a bit of a scamp as well, and Nan Earl no longer suffers by comparison with the boy, for she plays so beautifully that everyone is talking about her and admiring her execution. I bought a charming little clavier from Stein in Augsburg, which does us good service for practicing on during our travels. Once, since we started upon them, it was in Augsburg, I think, Wolfgang, on waking up in the morning, began to cry. I asked him the reason, and he said that he was sorry not to be seeing Herr Hagenauer, Wenzel, Natzerl, and other good friends. In Mainz, Nan Earl was given as presents an English hat and a galanterie set of bottles to the value of about four ducats. Here she has been given a snuff box of Vernis Martin and a piece of palatine embroidery, while little Wolfgang has received a porcelain snuff box.